sitting here on time. Thanks for coming back, and we have some new faces, including Ryan Charles from Reddit. We're so happy that he's here to teach a class. Big round of applause for Ryan Charles. And we'll do our raffle today from O'Reilly for the conference and a couple of books and stuff like that. So um, we'll do that on a break. So from here, we'll just let Ryan take it away. And then after lunch, I think we'll do our student intros. And um, like that. Okay. Pleasure, Ryan. All right, so my name's Ryan X. Charles. Uh, I'm, a, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a cryptocurrency engineer. Uh, so I figured I would explain my, my background before diving into transactions. So I, uh, I was a physicist. I was getting a PhD in physics. And uh, I discovered Bitcoin in early 2011. And uh, I was just very fascinated with uh, uh, the fact that it was possible to have decentralized money. So for about two years, this was just a hobby of mine. I kept doing physics. I was going to be a physics professor. Um, but over time, I became less interested in sort of pursuing academia as a career. And I basically, Bitcoin just sort of exploded throughout the, the course of my sort of uh, you know, trading as a hobby. So in early 2013, I, Bitcoin got big enough that I realized that I could actually make Bitcoin a career. So I decided to leave physics and go full-time Bitcoin. So that was you know, about a little over a year and a half ago. And I decided, I sat back and thought about, well, what can I do in Bitcoin? Because I had never really done much. It was just like a hobby. And so I consciously decided I wanted to be an expert in JavaScript Bitcoin because uh, <laughs> JavaScript is just the best way to reach the most people with the fewest lines of code because it runs on every platform. <clears throat> So uh, shortly thereafter, after I started you know, focusing on JavaScript, I joined BitPay uh, because BitPay is actually a very pro-JavaScript uh, company. Uh, so they were happy to, uh, to hire me. Uh, so I worked at BitPay for uh, a year. And I was very happy at BitPay. Was, I, I did a lot of cool stuff there. So I worked on open source JavaScript code. We had a, a, a library called BitCore, which was a uh, uh, JavaScript Bitcoin library that I made many contributions to. Um, uh, but then I had this really unique opportunity of Reddit. And Reddit is this community, I'm, I'm sure many of you are, are on Reddit. Um, we have something like over 100 million unique visitors every month. Um, and they wanted to hire a cryptocurrency engineer uh, to bring cryptocurrency technology to Reddit. So I just, I just thought that was a really cool opportunity, so I decided to leave BitPay and join Reddit. So I've been at Reddit since September, and I'm spending most of my time working on a project called Reddit Notes, which will be, uh, well, we'll worry about the details later, but it's a <laughs> cryptocurrency-related project. Uh, and I'm also trying to do other things at Reddit that involve this technology. Um, so, uh, yeah, so for instance, I've thrown out the idea of doing micropayments and stuff like that at Reddit to monetize content or something. I think there are tons of ways we could use this technology right now. Uh, so anyway, uh, I've, I've implemented many Bitcoin standards. So if you look at like my work on Bitcore, I've, I've implemented in JavaScript most of the Bitcoin protocol, uh, as well as uh, various other sort of high-level protocols sitting on top of Bitcoin, like the payment protocol and stuff like that. Um, so this, so I'll, I'll give two talks today. Uh, the first talk is on transactions. It was going to be on transactions and blocks, but I realized transactions by themselves was such a large topic that I pushed the blocks to the second result result. of a single. So this is uh, this chart here. I don't know how well you can see the details, but this chart was created by Alan Rayner, and this is like I think the best way to summarize a transaction in a single plot. A transaction is just a piece of data that has inputs and outputs, and the inputs link to the previous transactions. And that's basically it. And it also has value in there, and it has scripts in there. 
And so that's what I'm going to talk about is what is all this, all the detailed you know, structure of the information stored inside of a transaction. Um, and uh, by the way, this plot, if you, some of you, well, many of you are on computers, uh, you can see this plot. Actually, uh, it would actually be helpful if you looked at this plot. It's on the, uh, 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 the Bitcoin wiki. I think if you just Google for like Bitcoin transactions, it'll probably be the first result. Um, so you can zoom in and look at it. And that's, this is literally the entire you know, hour I'm going to be talking about all the details of everything that's in this plot here. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, in order to understand like the data structures in a transaction, um, there are numbers. So uh, this is a trick question. Uh, which number format is used in Bitcoin? Does anybody have a <coughs> guess? Really? Hey, yeah, all of them. them. All of them. It is all of them. Every single one of them is used in Bitcoin. Um, so this is, I, I think the reason for this, there's no good reason other than uh, I think this was just Satoshi, one human being, created Bitcoin, and he found it easy in C++ to use many different uh, number formats. I think it was just easiest. Um, it would be easier for other people who want to implement Bitcoin if he used one, but whatever, he used all of them. <laughs> so, so, for, so probably a lot of you guys, are, you guys are all like developers and stuff, so you're, you've probably heard of many of these different formats, maybe not all of them, so I'm going to cover them first because otherwise other things won't make sense. So first of all, uh, Bitcoin uses both big Indian and little Indian numbers in different places. So they're both, you have to use both of them. Uh, so big Indian is the kind of number that we're all familiar with, which is the most significant digit is on the left. Little Indian is the most significant digit is on the right. So this is the number 1,000 written in various ways. So big Indian, for the one is on the left, right? Uh, if you write it out in hex, normal hex, uh, it's 3E8. And the little Indian, it's 8E3. Um, if you write it out in bytes, bytes, of course, is actually base 256, because each byte can be anywhere from 0 to 255, right? So in bytes, in decimal bytes, it's 3 and then 232. In, in little Indian, it's 232 and then 3. So, and I just want to point out the difference between hex bytes and hex. And the difference is that in hex bytes, it looks like it's 0, 3, and then E8. <coughs> And then it's E8 and then 0, 3. So it's rather than being like 8E3, which it is if you just reverse the characters in hex, you're reversing the bytes. So if you want to reverse a hex string, you actually have to reverse you know, them in pairs. Um, and then you can see the binary result down there. Um, you know, whatever, a bunch of ones and zeros. Um, so the only thing you really have to remember is that little Indian is just backwards. And uh, I think uh, x86 machines use Little Indian. I, I have no idea if anybody knows the history of this. I assume there are like just efficiency reasons why they use Little Indian. Um, but in any case, like just because like an x86 x86 machine, if you have like a just a normal integer, it is Little Indian. So anyway, um, so here's just a, another example: uh, 1001, which of course is the same forwards and backwards. And then it would be like you're saying, rather than 1,000 and 1, it is 1 and 1,000. That's the little Indian version in English. Um, and you can see, yeah, so it's just, that's 1,001. Um, all right, so here are two other formats used in Bitcoin. Uh, uh, if you want to represent negative numbers, um, the obvious way to do this is to have a bit that represents the sign. And that's basically what sign magnitude is. Sign magnitude is where the most significant bit represents the sign. If it's zero, it's positive. It's, if it's one, it's negative. Um, so here we have the uh, number negative one. Um, by the way, I made a whole bunch of these, and there might be mistakes. So don't hesitate to call me out if I made a mistake in any of these. But um, so in it's easiest to look at like in binary. You can see like I've got four bytes here. It's negative one in big Indian. So if there's a one. Uh, and then like also the most significant bit is flipped, so there's another one. Uh, and then in two's complement, it's just like the way two's complement works is um, the formal definition, if I remember correctly, is you, you take the unsigned bit representation and subtract two to the n, which is equivalent to flipping all the bits and adding one. So that's what this is. So it turns out that like negative one is just all f's. And this plays a role because you'll see like negative one cast to an unsigned integer in Bitcoin. And so you see like why is this all Fs? This is why. Um, so you'll see this show up again. Um, 
And, uh, oh, okay, so I'm just showing here. Uh, so that was big Indian, and now this is little Indian. So, um, oh, I can already see I made a mistake. So in like uh, in my in the lower left there, there should be an extra one somewhere. That's because it's negative one, and one of the bits should be flipped. So that's there's a mistake there. Um, so actually, what I'm writing down with the the binary format here is unintentionally because I forgot to write down the one is actually negative zero rather than negative one. Uh, <coughs> all right. So and here are some other examples of uh, just the number five converted to bytes. Um, so these are four bytes, little Indian, so the most significant byte is on the left, so you see